Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Gaming and the most disappointing RPG that I have ever played. Why not the worst RPG that I've ever played? Well, that's a video from way back when. And this game itself isn't the worst RPG that I've ever played, but it was very disappointing. There's a difference, and the differences are for these reasons. For one thing, the game itself, Eldritch Skies, has received acclaim from many people. Many people that I know, players, GMs, reviewers, have all said that Eldritch Skies is a, a fantastic hard sci-fi Cthulhu game. I believe it even won an award last year. So that was disappointing. The GM, who by all accounts, while I have not played with him before or since, is a good one. At his craft he excels, I understand. However, he must have been having an off day for this game because it was incredibly disappointing. Why else was it disappointing? Well, the rest of the group that I was playing with seemed so utterly keen to make it a good session, and yet nothing that we could do could do it. We could not pull it from the muck. The feculence that filled this game. It was so very, very disappointing. And I'm not going to name names or shame GMs or anything like that, because I don't. Uh, but I am going to relay why a game... <laughs> relay! <laughs> relay! Uh, why a game can be so disappointing, despite all evidence to the contrary. If anything, this is a do-not-do-this advice session to prospective GMs. Firstly, we arrived at the gaming table. Well, this was a convention game. Uh, it was not a group that I had played with before. Uh, well, I've played with a few of them before. I have not played with any of them at length, really, except all but one. And, yes, we arrived at the game table. It was the first game I'd signed up for at the convention because I was easing myself into the con with games with which I was familiar. And, as it said, it was a Cthulhu game. I thought, why not? I'll give Eldritch Skies a go. There seems to be balloons in it, as well as rockets. It seems a very interesting take on the mythos. I will give it a go. And so I signed up, turned up. Five minutes later, the GM wasn't there. I'm, okay, I checked the time. We were there on time. All the players were there. Ten minutes later, the GM wasn't there. Fifteen minutes later. Twenty. Twenty-five. Half an hour now. Forty minutes. GM had occasionally been spotted going in and out of the room. In fact, he had even gathered us together, I think, to take us to the table, and then just disappeared. Transpired in the brief times that we saw the GM that he had been writing the game pretty much up till the last minute, had only just got it finished, and seemed to still be doing so after we all sat down. That he had, had not had time to print out character sheets. Uh, or, um, su or supplements, and so he was looking for a printer or photocopier on the convention site in order to do all of that. My question, which I should have asked then, and I apologise for not doing so, Mr GM, is why did you put your name down to run this game if you did not have everything ready, if you didn't actually know what you were going to run in advance? Most people that I know that run games at conventions seem to have a general idea of how the game is going to play out. In fact, they know the plot of the game, otherwise they wouldn't be running it. You know, that they wouldn't be running it for a field of new people, unless they're supremely confident, and maybe this guy was supremely confident. I would say that in this session, his confidence was misplaced, because it was about 45 minutes, according to some accounts it was an hour. Um, those of us who have stayed in contact after that tremendously uh, traumatic time uh, have debated how long it actually took for the GM to finally sit down and start running the damn thing, and yet... Eventually, we started playing. The game itself saw us on a galactic body. We were scientists, or half of the group were scientists that were already based on this planetoid. The other half of us were special forces who were being sent to investigate a strange monolith that had been uncovered in a cave on this planet's surface. It was covered in runes that nobody could understand, but they seemed to give out some kind of power. My character had various uh, lay psychic abilities, if I recall correctly, and so I could tap in some of the magic, and my hope was that I was able to interpret some of the runes, even if they drove my character insane. Hey, it's Cthulhu, you're supposed to do that. And so what we were doing was trying to find our way to this cave, which was nowhere near where we landed, of course, because it wouldn't be an adventure if we could land there and go straight in. 
we landed at the camp of the scientists and the scientists all seemed very very cagey they didn't seem to want to take us anywhere they didn't seem to want to get us to our destination now part of the reason for this was because they were all controlled by the other players so they didn't actually know what it was they were supposed to know in character if you see what I mean. Their role would have been ideally matched to NPCs, but wait, there was a twist, there was a tilt, there was a trick, and that was one of the scientists was already infected by the monolith, was already being controlled by the outer darkness, the otherworldly forces, and slowly, whenever that scientist was able to get the other scientists on their own, he or she was going to be infecting them. Okay, which is fine, except those players, while they were being taken off every now and then, didn't seem to be pushing us in any particular direction. We just seemed to be faffing around for about two hours, not knowing what to do, going up to people who didn't know anything, asking questions, occasionally hearing screams, by the time we got to the location of those screams, not finding anything amiss. Um, spending our time on a wild goose chase looking for a way to power up various vehicles, finding the stores sabotaged but not actually finding the cause behind it, um, which could have been our fault, we weren't looking in the right places, but I would again say that if that appears to be the case, the GM should perhaps, um, you know, drip feed the clues to the players in a more apparent way. Uh, eventually, we pretty much commandeered a vehicle in order to take us to this cave because the entire reason for us being there was the monolith. We had lost contact with the ship up above us, it couldn't land, and so we couldn't get out, despite everyone acting very freaky. We all got in on board this vehicle and we made our way towards the cave containing the monolith. Everything was seemingly going to plan, it had been about two and a half hours of gameplay by this point, of us just going from lab to lab asking question after bloody question getting absolutely nowhere. And finally we reached the bloody cave. And the monolith was in there. One of us went up to it, I believe one of us touched it, blood started filling the room, one of us um, got turned into one of the aliens, the scientists turned against us. Uh, two of us tried to escape, we tried to get back to the vehicle which we were successfully able to do and uh, tried to tear away we used a piece of technology that we had, a sort of portal to open it up and get us back to our own world. Unfortunately, the portal was open for long enough for Cthulhu, who had emerged from the monolith, to also pry his way through it and therefore take over the Earth. The adventure ended. Alright, the way I paint it, it doesn't sound like a particularly good adventure. And the thing is, I'm, I expect it could have been. Arrive at a camp where things are going in the style of the thing, people are slowly getting infected, a sense of paranoia should be felt based on the actions of the scientists who probably should be played by the GM, although it's a nice twist to have a plant in the group, having the group increasingly populated by plants, uh, not triffids, who are slowly going well, working against the other players except not knowing what it is they've got to do doesn't work as well. You know, the concept itself could have worked perfectly fine. But because the adventure seemed to end as soon as we got to the monolith, and that was our only destination, the fact that we could not get there in the first couple of hours of the game for no real reason, everything seemed to be just stacked up against us to delay us constantly, with no sense of tension, no sense of threat. At one point I got up to get something to eat and um, was sort of talked about behind my back, I understand, uh, to which I say, you know what, if you'd turned up on time, if you'd started running the game on time, I would have done that, it would have felt like less of an interference because the game would have been running for longer, stretched out for longer. Hell, if you turned up on time, maybe we would have been doing nothing for, th nothing for three hours instead of two and a half hours, or three and a half hours for two and a half hours, instead of two and a half hours. It was just so turgid. It just felt like such a waste of time. It felt like a waste of four hours of my life. Sat at this table with the, a bunch of players with the best one in the world. Hell, one of them had come all the way over from Holland. And we were just sat there. You know, if I was more polite, I would have just got up and left. But no, I'm so impolite that I will instead post a video about my disappointment. Because what should be a fantastic game 
according to reviews, was instead turned into something that I've got no intention of ever revisiting. It's, I think, a tragedy that a game as good as that, I've just got no interest in playing again, just in case, just in case the game is like that. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, the idea of playing a game like that again, or even running it again. So Eldritch Skies, unfortunately, has been served with a side order of disappointment, because I've, yeah, got no desire to ever revisit that setting, that world, that rule set. Um, the rule set itself seemed perfectly simple, by the way, and this isn't a review of the game, but and the setting itself seemed like it could have promise, but this game... The actions of the GM, the unprofessionalism. No one paid for the game, in fairness. It was a free game to play, to my recollection. The players seemed to develop a certain camaraderie through having to endure all of this together, which again is a symptom of a game that is out of control. Um, you know, there, there were plus sides. The characters themselves seemed interesting enough, but we weren't ever given an opportunity, really, to play on our characters' strengths or weaknesses. There was nothing in the plot that actually had um, any bearing on our characters, the various sort of merits, flaws, or call them what you will, of our character sheet. Uh, our abilities were mostly redundant. The only point of the game seemed to be Hold them up, hold them up, hold them up, hold them up. Big reveal, that's it, it's the end of the world. Could you do anything about the end of the world? If you could, there were certainly no tools that were apparent to me as a player that I could have used that would have prevented it. And again, fair enough, it's Cthulhu. Loss should be accepted as the conclusion. You know, you're not um, expecting to win or to come away with a pot of gold and a fanfare from the rest of civilization. You're expecting to lose. But that feeling of loss should be built up as part of dynamic, of plot, um, of, you know, of drama, of NPC interactions, of artefact finding, of clues, not just a feeling of loss, of interest. And by the end of that game, I couldn't give a shit if Cthulhu ate me, the planet Earth, the rest of the universe, intelligent life as we know it, because my interest had gone. It was disappeared. And yeah, so Eldritch Skies, most disappointing RPG I've ever played. And it's not your fault, Eldritch Skies, it's the fault of the GM, who, again, I'm reliably informed, runs a good game sometimes. This was not one of those times. Thank you for watching.